Um, so this was a video that was um, made by my cousin and uh, and it's so um, it was amazing to do that with her so um, but now I'm going to go into the, the slideshow and uh, I want to introduce you to this place uh, which is also my main source of um, inspiration and it's also where I get all my materials. Um, So the place is up north um, in Iceland. Uh, you can see where the photograph is. And uh, it's approximately three and a half hours from Reykjavik. Um, and where, the, where we go, uh, if we drive a little bit further, the road kind of ends. So there's no way you always, if you go there, you have to always go back. There's no ring road there. Um, so this is the creek. and. Um, this mountain, it goes with me everywhere when I'm not there. It's kind of like my strength. Um, and you can see the house uh, where I go, uh, where we stay is um, in the left corner. And um, you can see the, the nature and it's just covered by mountains, this creek. But uh, yeah, so this is like the basic, um, the basic thing in my work. And this has been like, ever since I started my education, this has been like what has driven me on um, the road. You know, the work most personal to the individual maker tends to be the work people relate to the most. And for me, it just kind of doesn't make any sense to create anything that I don't create with passion and from my heart. Uh, these are my grandparents and um, my grandfather actually bought the creek in company with 15 other um, in 1961 and um, like two years later he passed away and um, my grandmother was left 
with this place and and um, of course her house in in Reykjavik but she had four children so it was kind of amazing um, for her to to you know you know, she didn't sell the place or and um, you know you can imagine the struggle of having the four kids and and uh, keep keep that place as well um, let's see um, so this is the place and you can see the you can see the like the scale you know of the mountains and that's my dad fly fishing um, and on to the driftwood. Um, the driftwood comes from Siberia. And um, people think, you know, what I've heard that is it's been in the ocean for five to 30 years. So I have no idea actually. Um, so basically the, the trees get ch chopped down in Siberia and um, they used to get floated down the rivers and uh, and that meant that some of the logs would escape into the ocean and they would be, you know, go into the currents of the ocean and, and stay there, like the wood would stay there for that time. And what would happen is that the salt would go into the, into the wood and uh, it actually preserves the wood so much. So the wood would be, was used um, for fence poles, for farmers' houses, and it was the most, you know, amazing material to use. Um, it was so durable because um, it used to last much longer because of the harsh winters here. Um, so the salt would would help it, the material. So you can see my mother there in the one of the photos, but most of the wood there now is is rotten. Um, you know, if it doesn't get taken off the beach immediately, uh, the wood um, absorbs the water as well, water and snow, so it becomes rotten inside. Um, so sometimes I actually wonder if I found the driftwood or if it's vice versa and the wood actually found me. The latter sounds more romantic anyway, but the wood connects me directly with the amazing force, force of nature that the ocean is, the power of the wave and the mystery behind this water that covers 70% of the earth. So I'm going to show you, this is like my first piece that I made with the wood. And um, this piece of wood was, you know, on my bench in, at school. And, uh, and I was so happy when I, you know, I found the purpose for it. So, so the, this is a road map neck piece and um, the sterling silver pieces are actually riveted so you can move them and they meant to represent the, the path up north. Um, these are the small pieces that I've used in my later year works and uh, you can see on the photograph on the right, the, you can see the small pieces within the stones but um, this is usually, you know, this these pieces still come in to the beaches and uh, I get to pick them up and they're, they're a very nice material. So this was my first piece that I made from these, the little guys. And um, this is the red thread. Um, I created this in 2010 and it's got silk, red silk. And on the pieces I've written the names of of people in my family that go up to that place and um, it's um it's like you know the red is representing the connection and uh, my family and uh, you can see mama and pape and that's you know mom and dad and sunna she's actually the my cousin that makes the video so it's like a it's what connects us together and that's what you know, in Icelandic, that means the red thread is, yeah, what connects us. So, and then I started exploring what I could do more with the wood and um, I started to whitewash it um, because I'm quite fascinated by, you know, what happen happens underneath the wood and no underneath the surface. And uh, because, 
you know, we, we don't know what's happening in the ocean. You know, it's 70% of the, of the earth, but it's like the most uncommon, um, you know, it's a mystery that we don't know all that much about. And I also, I like the connection of, you know, looking at myself, you know, how much do I know about a person? You know, can I only see a part of the surface or do I see everything? Um, in this piece, I'm working with the rotten wood, you know, using the surface of the wood. And um, this is in combination with sterling silver and the blue panel that's from abandoned house up north. Um, I can still use the surface of the wood that's on the beach, so I'm quite lucky with that. Um, on the left, there's a piece um, made from Japanese driftwood. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to Japan, and the Japanese driftwood is is totally different. It's um, it's something that you know there's a um, what's it called a hurricane or some severe uh, weather conditions so the the wood goes out to the ocean but stay there stay doesn't stay there for that long so it's much softer and much more delicate um, than the Icelandic driftwood um, the, the Icelandic driftwood on the in the right photograph is it's much harder and it's obviously, you know, salt is doing so much to it. So it's like stronger and, and more durable. Um, I really enjoy exploring surfaces as well. So the brooch, it's, these are two brooches and um, the brooch on the top is pumice. So it's a, like a stone. And um, on the bottom, there's a, a driftwood brooch that I, you know, I've just left it. I've, I've left the surfaces as they are and uh, just put simple sterling silver uh, backs on, on the back of them. Um, and I don't want to alter these. They are, they are just perfect as they are. Um, this is my go-to for play. And um, I, these are driftwood and uh, leftover materials that I have in my workshop. So these are like three inches tall or eight centimeters. And uh, there I'm also using metals and um, panel from that abandoned house up north as well. Um, and this is my current work, um, well, recent work, uh, where I'm using just, you know, I use everything from the beach. So this is what was in front of me to do at that time when I got my hands on that material. And uh, it's more like lighter, it plays with shadows, it, it works on the wall as well. Um, but it's very light and delicate piece. And uh, I quite like the flowy, the flowiness of it. Um, so in this is, yeah, it's actually a big faith process towards the universe and, and the ocean, not knowing what kind of materials are waiting for me at the beach each time I go there. And if there are any materials at all. So I just want to emphasize the, the whole faith process because you know, I never know what's, what's gonna be there for me. So yes, so thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Helga, for this inspiring journey. You are getting so many nice comments on your work oh, and thank you. your story about your work and your family. And thank it's you. nice how um, many of you are including a little story on the grandparents. I think it says a lot about the Icelandic culture and the family connections here. So thank you so much. And of course, Ragnar, I need you to buy me one to bring back to New York. So Absolutely, Philip. I need at least yeah. one of these necklaces. Yes. At least one. <laughs> <laughs>